Last year, when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside, like Riot Blockchain before it shot up 10,000%, Digital Turbine before it shot up 789% in overstock, before it shot up over 1,000%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Chaikin. And right now you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any of the 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to powergagetrial.com for your free look. Again, that's powergagetrial.com for your free look. All right, let's get to our segment today. Hi, this is Daniela Cambone, and welcome back to the Daniela Cambone Show here on Stansberry Research, part of our summer series. We hope you're enjoying it thus far, and we have brought back another fan favorite. Please welcome back Mark Yaxley, Managing Director over at Strategic Wealth Preservation, SWP. They're a uh, bullion storage and provider based out of the Cayman Islands. Mark, always good to see you. Welcome back. You as well, Daniela. Always a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if I should be calling you uh, Mark Faxley. I see that's the new uh, term that the fans <laughs> have given you because you drop truth bombs when it comes to the gold market. So uh, good for you. for. I've been called worse, a... Daniela, so uh, <laughs> I, I can roll with Faxley. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, like, help us get the facts straight today, okay? Because I know I've asked this question probably a thousand times over the course of my career. But what is going on with the gold prices? Is it, you know, it's definitely um, having a more difficult summer uh, compared to last uh, due to the higher interest rate environment, the strong U.S. dollar. Uh, what's uh, what's going to happen with gold here, Mark? That is definitely the question that all precious metal investors and colleagues of mine in the industry are asking themselves. So I've done some digging for you, Daniela, and I'm happy to report that the answer is actually quite simple. So on the support side, obviously, we have the war in the Ukraine. We've got a lot of volatility, a lot of uncertainty in the market. You've got the inflation card. Everyone's expecting that to be positive for gold. But on the other side of that equation, you've got this US dollar that is just so strong right now. And if you look at the US dollar index today, it's at about 107. On July 14th, it was 109, which was a 20 year high. So we're not just talking yeah. about your kind of uh, run of the mill, oh, the dollar strong argument. This is a 20 year high for the US dollar, which is having obviously uh, a negative effect on the price of gold because gold is priced in US dollars. So the stronger the US dollar is, the less US dollars you need to buy an ounce of gold. The math is pretty simple. And if there's one number that really shows the correlation and how strong the impact of the USD is on gold, Q2 US dollar index was up 6.5%. Q2, the price of gold was down 6.4%. So correlation is basically one to one at this point. That's really the main driver and that's what mm -hmm. investors need to be paying attention to. Mm -hmm. And yet on the flip side, when I was looking at, at premium specifically, on um, uh, the U.S. gold eagle and silver eagle, they're ridiculous. That's right. And that's what's interesting is the support and demand for physical is actually much higher than the industry anticipated. We set our budgets at the beginning of the year based on past performance and seasonality. And June, uh, you know, beat expectations by about 60 percent, which is significant. And I looked at wholesale premiums this morning and premiums never lie. We've talked about this in the past. The producers and the distributors will only set their premiums for their products high when they know that they can sell them. If they can't sell them, they're going to drop those premiums immediately and quite low to move that product. And today the wholesale premium on Silver Eagles was $12 over spot. So that tells me there's still a lot of people buying silver right now. The same is true of gold, I can tell you. From, uh, from, from the volume that we're seeing at SWP. So on one side of the argument, you have a lot of demand, but on the other side, you have a really, really strong US dollar. And if you could just share, I always love getting these insights. I'm curious to know what the folks are buying when they are calling. Are there certain products that are hotter than others? Well, I mean, definitely. And, and you have to take that into consideration, especially when the market is in such a strange place. You want to try to save as much uh, uh, premium or percentage over the spot price as possible. So a lot of people get fixated on the price going down 
and 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 they're like, well, you know, I, I'm losing, you know, one or two percent a week on my investment, and yet they'll go out and buy Silver Eagles the next time that they invest, and they'll pay way more premium than they should be. So what a lot of, I'd say, more sophisticated investors are doing right now is they're really focusing in on 1,000-ounce silver bars. We've seen a lot of those right. move lately. The 100-ounce silver bars, if you're, if you're buying silver, are, are still of good value. And on the gold side, there's no change, really. It's kilo gold bars are, are the best value for your, your dollar. So we have noticed a trend recently that there are more uh, large buyers coming into the market, which, from my experience, tells me that you've got these sophisticated investors that are starting to reallocate their portfolios, starting to move money into precious metals. And they don't just dabble, they come in and buy a fairly large position all at once. And yeah. those are the products that they're focused on because they're trying to save a few percentage points as the price continues to decline. That makes a lot of sense. And, and you know, just to your point about people tend to just really focus on price. Um, if I could share a personal story, when I was out last week, you know, I was at a coffee shop, uh, you know, just with some friends laughing, having a good time. Someone recognized me, came up. It was the day of the dip in gold and was, you know, just basically in tears like, what's happening to the gold market? And, you know, he wanted me to commiserate with him. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it's, I guess I've just been in this, in this sector for so long that I, I, I'm used to the volatility. I can stomach it. And but personally, I just see it as opportunity, right? Absolutely. I, I, that's what you should be telling this this poor person that, that that's upset <laughs> and interrupting your coffee. I mean, at the end of the day, we're only 15 percent off the highs that were reached in August of 2020 when gold was about two thousand and thirty dollars an ounce. So it's not earth shattering. This isn't Bitcoin. We haven't lost half of the investment. This is a healthy correction. These things happen. And and, and as we said earlier, caused by the USD. So what should this person be thinking instead of panicking? What they should be thinking is, are we approaching the bottom in gold? And if so, I should start uh, cost averaging down. I should start buying at these lower prices. That's going to bring my average cost down a little bit. And if I don't feel comfortable about picking the exact bottom, which is always hard for anybody, even the most experienced traders, just set a regular uh, purchasing program up where you can buy maybe on a weekly or on a monthly basis. You can dedicate a specific amount of money each month that you're going to go and buy precious metals and you're going to use that cost averaging system, you know, as we approach this bottom in, in gold and silver, hopefully. So that's what I would remind people to do. And again, like I said earlier, pick products that will allow you to save a little bit of premium, a little bit of spread, and you're going to be okay. Gold and silver always do their job. That's the one thing I've learned selling this stuff for so long is they always do their job in the end, but you have to give them the time uh, to be able to do that. So patience is required. We've been saying that for a little while now. I guess other big news this summer surrounding the precious metals world is um, all these news headlines coming out now about JP Morgan spoofing the market and not just individuals, but there's headlines basically saying they were trained by their bosses to spoof the precious metals markets. And I know I've said this in past interviews that, you know, back in the day, Mark, you remember when we started uh, in the industry, uh, the talk of you know, gold manipulation was really like, you couldn't talk about it. Like it was like an underground thing. You were seen as like a conspiracy person if you did speak about it. And now it's really like almost out in the open. Like, yeah, banks were spoofing the prices. So I just want to know what, what, what you're thinking as someone in the industry. Um, do you think that, you know, should JP Morgan just be told like, hey, you can't be trading precious metals anymore. It stops here. Right. Well, the first thing I can say, Daniela, is there's a lot less room for manipulation when you talk about the physical market, when, you know, people are trading and purchasing and selling actual physical products. There's a lot less room for manipulation there versus the paper market. And, and, and the manipulation that we're talking about in this case with the JP Morgan is, is has to do with futures contracts, basically paper contracts. And so there's there. Unfortunately, that is part of the banking culture. It's it's become ingrained in the banking culture. And the, the culture basically dictates that you make as much money for the bank at all costs. It does not matter what the effect is on anyone else outside of the bank. You do it for the good of the bank. And that is, you know, that's well documented. You know, two mm. of the traders are already found guilty. Three more are on trial. The bank is, is already yeah. agreed to pay a fine of nine hundred twenty million dollars to the Department of Justice. So we know there's manipulation. Um, should they be allowed to continue these practices without more severe consequences? It's a it's a tough conversation because J.P. Morgan is very well ingrained, entrenched in the LBMA. 
uh, in, in other associations and organizations that sit right at the top of our industry. They've been, they're founding members, in fact. They sit on the, the boards, they sit on the committees, and so displacing them is going to be very, very difficult. That's probably why it hasn't happened yet, because there's been no lack of fault uh, or guilt on their part. Uh, but moving them out of these associations of influence is going to be a big challenge. In my opinion, if you cheat, mm. should you be punished? Should you be removed? Should your licensing be removed? Yes, of course. Absolutely. But uh, yeah. we're not talking about your average precious metal dealer here. You know, these are the big boys. Well, to, to the point of paper gold, I just if I could just uh, fire up here um, an image that our mutual friend David Morgan recently tweeted that I thought I'd share with you, Mark. Uh, you see the you know inverse triangle, paper gold all the way at the bottom, physical gold. And this is something that you've been uh, trying to educate folks on for the longest time that, you know, is there enough uh, physical gold to match the paper gold? Well, yeah, we know that there's not enough physical gold to match the paper gold, that a lot of gold products are leveraged and you know, so if you want to undertake the uh, the job of accounting uh, for all of that paper versus physical, I think you're going to be disappointed at the end of the day. That's why, you know, for the average retail investor, I think the physical market makes sense. They don't need to to buy paper products. The money that they're going to save in in buying paper products uh, isn't nearly worth the risk. Uh, you know that that the risk and or manipulation and or lack of understanding of what they're actually purchasing. You're going to pay a little bit more money and you're going to, you are going to remove all third party risk by owning that, that personal property, which is what physical metal is. When you own it, that's considered personal property, just like your home or, or the watch on your, on your wrist. So, you know, for the average person, the takeaway here is if you don't understand it and you're worried about manipulation, stick to the physical and you're going to be okay. Okay, and I have to ask you, I guess, two things as we wrap here. You're still liking maples. Um, I love, you know, I'm a big proponent of, of bars because the, the overall spread, uh, it tends to be a little bit lower than yellow, especially with those larger format bars. But today when I was preparing again, yeah. I looked at, this is a really simple example and, and something, you know, a lot of people like silver eagles and silver maples. Wholesale cost for silver eagles is $12 right now. Wholesale cost for silver maples is $5. That's a difference of, geez, we're talking like 25% premium. Um, why would you pay that much more for two products that are essentially the exact same thing? So in that what case, I'm you? loving silver maples. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're loving. So what do the folks tell you when they're like, "Well, oh, but I want the, you know, the U.S. Mint one"? Is it just because? Uh, honestly, I would do my like very best to, like the design. To, to talk them out of it. Um, I, yeah. I, I, if you're, if you're. <laughs> If you're an honest professional uh, and you are really acting in the best interest of your client, you are going to give them every option before yeah. kind of allowing them to make that decision, which right now I, I can't see why you would do it. I, I just don't see the upside for investors in, in paying that high of a premium. Yeah. Well, you're one of the best out there, I guess. Um, here's my million dollar question for you. You kind of touched on it before the bottom and you said it's impossible to call, but do you think we're getting there with gold and silver? We have to be getting close. Um, we have to be getting close. There's a few reasons why the cost to produce an ounce of gold from a mining perspective right now, I think that average cost worldwide is about twelve hundred and thirty dollars or something like that. But within that spectrum of producers, there are producers right now that are actually losing money on the cost of production. They all in cost to produce an ounce of gold. So when that happens, you know that you're starting to get close to the floor because it becomes unsustainable for mines to continue to operate at a loss and they will not continue to operate at a loss for very long. So that's one reason I think uh, we're at the floor. Also, going back to the strong US dollar, if you believe that the US dollar is going to continue to strengthen, setting new 20 year highs, so that would be like 110, anywhere as high as maybe 120 on the US dollar index, then gold is going to yeah. is going to shed another five or 10 percent. If that is the direction that the dollar goes in. The other scenario is that the dollar kind of stabilizes and or starts to trend downwards. Maybe the euro starts to strengthen a little bit again, uh, which we saw this morning, a little bit of strengthening from the euro. Uh, in that scenario, then the price of gold is going to start to tick up again and the silver will follow it in an exaggerated manner. So those are the two scenarios. It's hard to say today which direction that's going in, but 
in either case, I don't think the bottom can be that much further because the dollar only has so much upside. Um, and also from a mining perspective, the supply demand question starts to be impacted at this point. Any thoughts as we wrap on uh, platinum and palladium? Got to have some. Uh, if you don't have any platinum or palladium, uh, your, your portfolio is not complete. These are industrial metals, obviously, uh, in a recessionary environment like we find ourselves now. They're not going to be performing at their very best. But that, that gives you a great opportunity to buy. Palladium, for example, was trading as high, I believe, as $3,200 an ounce uh, you know, within the last three years. And right now it's about 18 and change. So that's a good buying opportunity for a long-term uh, industrial metal play. Finally, Mark, are you enjoying your summer? Uh, you recently tweeted a beautiful picture of where you live, Golden, uh, British Columbia, just absolutely stunning. Are you enjoying it? Absolutely. It's been, Danielle, it's been a great summer. We have like perfect weather pretty much every day. We don't have a lot of forest fires, which for those of us who live in British Columbia, that's like our biggest concern. So yeah. no smoke in the valley and uh, we're enjoying ourselves. I hope you are as well. Absolutely. Well, it was awesome seeing you. Come back soon. And enjoy the rest of your summer, all Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You too, Dee. All right. And thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoy our summer series. We'll have more great content coming your way. So be sure to sign up at DaniellaCamboni.com. Thank you again, Mark Yaxley of Strategic Wealth Preservation, SWP. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.